Hi, this is Lawrence Winston with AO Scan, and welcome to our instructional video series. In this video, we will talk about how to set up your AO Scan at the beginning, setting it up and personalizing it to your business. So, to get started, when you open up your uh, system and you get to your desktop, find the icon and double click on it and open up the program. This is your starting page whenever you open up the AO Scan program. Here you can select the administrative things like selecting a client, setting up a technician, administration, changing the language, or accessing the different programs available within the AO Scan. For the purposes of this video, though, we're going to deal with getting you set up, getting the administration, your technician set up, and then going through on how to set up a client the first time. Next is selecting your uh, technician. Now when your program first comes it will be loaded with a John Doe as a technician. And obviously <clears throat> you don't have a John Doe so you're going to enter in your own technician. So up here under uh, technician name in that box type in the name of the person that's going to be the technician. Now if you're in an office where you have multiple uh, technicians, you would do this multiple times. So we've typed in Lauren Swenson, add technician, and there it is. Once you've added a technician, you can now get rid of the John Doe. There always has to be one in here. So to get rid of a, a technician is simply highlight it and then click on the delete selected technician. And now the only one in there is the new one that was just added. And you could add as many as you want uh, in this this area. Once that's done and you've got one highlighted, click back and you're done with the select technician. The last one, uh, and this is the most important one, is the client data. Now this is the form that you fill out for every client and it's absolutely imperative that you do it correctly. You cannot go back and change this unless you completely delete it and start over, but then any scans that you have done on that file will have to be deleted as well. So to the side of each box is an example of how it needs to be set up. So I'm going to type in the information for me uh, so that you can see how this is done. Last name. So capitalize the last name, then comma space first name now if there is a middle initial there would be a comma space and the middle initial if there is no middle initial you would not put the comma or the space after the first name okay now you can use either your tab button or your mouse to go to the next field so click on tab now, obviously gender male or female and we want that to be capitalized so capital M and it's important that when you do this and that all your technicians do it exactly the same. This is the one that you need to spend the time on to make sure everybody understands the importance of filling out this form correctly. Okay, the next one, click tab, birth date. A two-digit month followed by a two-digit uh, birthday and the forward slash and then a four-digit year just like it shows you in the uh, in the example. Next is their email. <clears throat> now you will have some people that don't have an email address or are opposed to having an email address. What you need to do is explain that by having an email that we can put into this category makes it to where we can send your reports instantly and you have them in your hand without having to have them printed out or any of the other hassles with not being able to email them. And so if you have someone that is adamant about not giving an email, then you must enter no email at gmail.com. No fields can be empty and they have to be filled out the way that they're designed. <clears throat> in this case, I'll put my email in Make sure that the email is correct. And again, if they're not going to give you one, then you must type in no email at gmail.com. 
Once you've got the email in, go to the next one. Now on the phone number, just like the uh, example shows, there are no hyphens or dashes. So <clears throat> you'd put in the number without those uh, the hyphens. There it is. Next, and their birthplace. Birthplace, we want city, comma, space, and state if it's in the USA. And you can add USA if you wish. Or if it's outside of the United States, we just need the city and the country. In this case, <clears throat> we'll type in the city and the country. Uh, it could have been Orem space, comma space Utah, comma space USA, it could be Beijing, comma China, whatever it is. Um, whatever you decide to do in this for your clients, make sure you're consistent with all your clients. Okay, again, city, comma, space, state, or country. Next is height. And the program is set up to either be in metric or in uh, your English measurements. If it's metric, just like the example says, 1.7 or whatever the height is, space, and then you spell out the word meters. If it's in English, then you would type in the feet, space, spell out feet, space, inches space and you would spell it out just like so five feet space and then seven space inches on your weight again just like the example shows if it's in kg the the number of uh, kilograms space kg or the pounds space and then lb not lbs just lb 210 pound five feet seven inches that's the way this these fields are set up and that's the way it needs to be entered. Hair color is based on the color of their hair when they were 10 to 12 years old. And eye color. So here we have the information. Go through this with your client. Make sure that all the information is correct. Make sure that your formatting is uh, precise. Once you're satisfied that it's there, and see we've got Germany is spelled wrong. You want to make sure everything is correct. Now let's say that you fill this out for somebody and uh, they weigh 170 pounds. And two months down the road, they come in and they say, well, I've lost 20 pounds. I want to change my data file. You cannot do that. It's based on the day that you start. And it, it doesn't matter if their weight goes up or down. Uh, if they dye their hair. None of those things matter. What's important is that the data initially was put in correctly. Once that's in, you've gone through it. Everything's correct. Click Save. And that's how you set up your program and that's how you get a client. When a client comes back <clears throat> and you need to relocate that client, you would open up the program, go to select client, it will come up blank and you have two ways of finding that information. In the bottom uh, box where it says search string, you can type in or you can go to select client and type in the first four letters of their last name and hit enter, or I'm sorry, uh, select client, and there it is. And if that's the right one, then you would, you, would, you would hit save and move on. Okay, and that concludes this video. Thank you for watching. Hi, this is Lauren Swenson with AOScan, and welcome to another video in our instructional video series. This video will focus on doing a vitals scan. And so to get started, locate your icon on your desktop and double click. And it will open up your uh, main program, bring you to your main page. Uh, first thing we need to do is make sure we've selected our client 
if we're just coming into the program click on select client uh, two ways to bring up your client click in the top box enter in the last the first four letters of the last name making sure you capitalize the first one and select client and that'll bring up your client if that's the one you need click save select your select technician make sure that the proper technician is highlighted uh, and then click back again and then left click one time on programs and right click or left click again on vital scan now this will bring up the uh, the vital scan page and if it's the first time this client's ever been scanned uh, it will bring up a blank report the first page of the of the first uh, report there are seven categories in this report uh, and each uh, one has one uh, two to, to seven pages so the blood report has two pages uh, you can highlight page one blood one or blood two and it shows you and on the back page the last page of every single report there is the disclaimer at the bottom okay so on chakras it shows you uh, the two pages again so let's go back to blood real quick if you'll notice on this report uh, you've got uh, your categories going from top to bottom and then you have a low a normal a high and then you have another low normal or high with a heading previous scan so that you can see the scan prior to the one you're doing right now so you that's how your report is set up on uh, chakra uh, you see your current and previous one on top of the other and on uh, the chakra 2 on the back page there again is the disclaimer but also a uh, brief uh, explanation of each chakra and the effect that they have when they're not in balance on the different organs of the body gastrointestinal again same low normal high and then the previous scan low normal high and their different categories and the last page with the disclaimer the meridian is similar to the chakras you have the current one on the top and the previous on the bottom and if you look it's a little hard on this screen but when you see the actual report you can actually see the meridian lines uh, for each meridian and then on the back page of meridian again an explanation of each meridian and the disclaimer nutritional analysis has three pages and it's a little bit different because it's just either normal or deficient and then you have the previous scan normal or deficient so easy to read easy to understand similar to a normal test that they would get if they went to a normal blood lab um, again your second page and then your third page with the disclaimer at the end physical functionality has six reports low normal high and each section of the report has its categories all the things that it can scan and again back page last page is the disclaimer toxicities is the biggest one with seven pages again this is back it's either and each one is slightly different in this one it's it's either positive or negative um, and then a previous scan uh, all the way through the different pages and then all the way down to the bottom with your disclaimer at the bottom okay so these are all the uh, uh, pages of the report it will scan all of them and then you're able to email this report and it's a total of 24 pages so to begin we just click scan now if you'll notice at the bottom all it has is technician here so before we hit scan we took one glance and found that we don't have our client so we need to go back go back again select the client make sure that we have our client entered then go back and hit your program your vitals now you'll notice the client and the technician are loaded it's really important it's really easy to miss a step and not actually get your client so there you see your client is loaded in and the technician right below everything's good okay so now that we've got everything ready go ahead and just click scan once you've clicked scan the um, uh, scanning process will immediately begin 
you'll see graphics over to the left that uh, are indicating that the scan is in process. There are seven reports in this scan, and as it goes through each one, each report has anywhere from two to seven pages, and it will scan each item on every page, and when it has done all seven reports and finish that scan, then the graphic will stop and the report will be displayed. Now this is the first report. And in like when you're having a conversation with somebody and you're speaking and all of a sudden the individual you're speaking to will stop you and say, wait a second, can you say that again? Because they weren't truly engaged in that discussion at that point, they weren't paying attention. Same thing kind of is happening here because now we've started a, co a communication with the brain and the brain wasn't completely ready for it. So we want to take this first scan, disregard it and redo the scan. But instead of redoing the scan from clicking the scan button, we click the frequency optimization. And what happens here is it will now go through each one of those seven reports once again, looking at those frequencies and optimizing them each way or each one all the, all the way through the scan. And then it will display that uh, final report uh, at the end. And what it will do when you look at that report, on the right of the report, uh, you'll see previous scan. And it will have the uh, results of the previous scan, the one that we just did previously, to the right. And then on the center of the page, you'll see the current scan. And that's the scan that has been optimized. In other words, everything has been double checked that the frequencies went in and were received properly um, in the brain and that is the scan we want to go with and that completes this scan and then when you're all done you can simply click email report and it will email those seven reports to the client hope this was helpful thank you for watching Hello, this is Lauren Swenson with AOScan. Welcome to another video in our instructional video series. On this video, we're going to discuss and show you how to do the comprehensive scan. So let's get started. Open up the program from double clicking on the icon on your desktop. This will bring you to your, uh, your main page. <clears throat> Before you move any further from here, you, we need to select two things with the client and the technician. First, we want to go to uh, the client, and there are two ways to do that. You can go down to the search string. If it is a first-time client, we need to enter in all the information that's shown here, and there's a video that explains how to do this and why it needs to be done a certain way. If it's a return and you know <clears throat> that this person has been here before, Click in the top box and type in the first four letters of the last name, capitalizing the first letter, and then click on Select Client. And there's your client. Click Save, and now he's loaded in, or this client is loaded in and ready. And then select Technician just to make sure that the correct technician is working and make sure that that name is in the blue up here at the top. Once that's done, click Back. Now we're ready to proceed. So click on, left click on the uh, Programs button, and we're going to do the Comprehensive. So we would left click on Comprehensive. This brings up the Comprehensive um, desktop. Uh, here on uh, the left, you have the buttons that you have. Scan, Create a PDF, Frequency Optimization, Database, Analyze Back and Reference Time. And then over on the right, on the bottom, you have Intelligent Scan, an email report. So these are the buttons that you'll have access to from this page. The middle column is your categories. These are the categories that uh, you have available to scan. So you've got the arteries and you'll notice that these groups are in color uh, codes um, just for ease in locating uh, the category that you want to scan. They have absolutely no bearing other than just ease in, in locating. Once you uh, select something, so let's say we're going to do the arteries of the head, you would double click on that and it would move arteries of the head over into the scan list box. And as you see, it changes it from the red to black. 
And every item that you move in will switch to black, which means it's ready to be scanned and has not been scanned. So you want to do the eye. And it will also bring up the uh, scan page. And as you can see, this would be a first time scan, so nothing, there's no data in there. If it was a repeat and it was something we'd scanned in the past, we would then see the, uh, the numbers in the boxes from the uh, previous scan. Okay, so once those, once you've got what you want loaded in, and let's say we want to do vertebrae as well, these items then <clears throat> you're ready to scan and you would click on scan and it would immediately go through and start scanning each item from the top of the list to the bottom. When it's finished, it would go back to the top uh, item in this list. Now this is the way you could do it manually. There's also another way and that is, and oh, by the way, to remove those, just double click on them and it will put them back over in their category. So the scan list now is empty. Now previously we had on this client we had scanned, uh, we'd done the uh, vital scan and we had done the inner voice scan. When you do those scans the software will look at the things that are uh, out of balance and will build a list of things that should be scanned in the comprehensive. If you have done that with your client like we have here, you would simply go down and click on the Intelligent Scan Selection. And when you do that, it would load all the things uh, that the software found needed to be scanned from the results of the other two scans, the inner voice and the vitals. This is a really nice feature. It saves a lot of time, especially if you're new to the AO scan. Uh, it makes it very simple to get started and get going. Now, this scan is just a suggestion. You can go through and say, oh, and no, I don't really need to do the left eye, and you could double click it out. And I don't want to do the blood cells, and you double click it out. Or you could just not do it at all and select whatever you want to do. And so, what we want to do in this one, though, is we, uh, we want to load that in. And then all you have to do is click scan, and it would go, go through the scan process. Now on this, uh, on the comprehensive scan, the scoring uh, is a little bit different from the, the vital scan and from the inner voice. Here the scans are uh, measured in a 1 to a 9, and the 5 is perfect balance. So if you have a number that appears in the little box uh, off to the right of each one of the items that you're going to scan. Uh, a five would be perfect. It's in perfect harmony with, with what it should be. If it's a four, three, two, or one, it's progressively not functioning. It's, it's slow, it's sick, it's, uh, just, it's not functioning the way it should. And the lower the number, uh, the worse that situation is. On the converse, if it's a six, seven, eight, or nine, it's progressively stressed, which could mean a blockage, it could mean uh, a a pinched nerve. Uh, it could be a lot of things, but causing stress on that particular item uh, and even indicating disease. So the numbering system here, again, one to nine, five in the middle being it's in, it's in perfect balance. Higher numbers, meaning it's leading to a stressful situation. Lower numbers to a non-functional. Okay, so that's how you would read and interpret the, the uh, the uh, scan results. Okay, so we're ready to scan. Uh, what we will do though is we will not do um, everything that's listed here. So we're going to go back and reopen it to where we were back to start. And we're just going to put in a few items to scan uh, for illustrative purposes in this video. And so we've got four items here. And we're going to go ahead and uh, scan those right now okay so as it scans each item that it scans it places into the uh, picture it starts with a blank screen and then each item that scans it adds it forms in 
this case, a yard clip. When it's finished doing the scan, you will then rotate, the picture will rotate as the software calculates, uh, scores the scan, and then the numbers will then be placed in. So we've got a wide range of numbers here, and then it will go to the next item. And we do that through everything listed in the scan, and each item ranges from about 18 seconds to 24 seconds to scan. As you can see, when it's finished, then the uh, numbers are, are displayed. So again, five, if you see a five, that's perfect. In fact, really the only numbers you really need to pay attention to is either a 1 or a 2, or a 7, or an 8 or a 9. The two extremes uh, on both ends. Now, if you'll notice, those uh, categories had switched to black when we put them in the scan list. Once they're scanned, they change color. A red would indicate, like arteries of the head is red, it indicates that you know, somewhere in that scan there was either a 1 or a 9. If it's a blue, that means it was the highest or lowest would have been uh, an 8 or a 2. And if it's green, then that means it doesn't have either a 1 or a 2 or an 8 or a 9. And in general speaking, you wouldn't need to do anything with anything that was green. We want to focus on the issues that are at cause and not things that are a symptom. Okay, so that's how a scan is done. And now at this point... Um, you have two options. You can go into database and then compare these items, and that's what we're going to do first. Especially if it's a first-time uh, scan, you re you definitely want to run the database because when you go to database, it will load those items that you've just scanned into the categories here on the left. We want to select all of those. Over on the right, you see database type, and right above that is select all. There's 18 databases here, and we want to compare each item that we scanned with each one of these databases. This helps us get more to where the cause of uh, the disruption is. And so you click select all, and then just to the left of that is analyze database. Now, as it goes through this, if you look here in the middle, Second line, comprehensive file, it's scanning right, or it's analyzing right now the arteries of the head against each one of these databases, and it shows you which database it's uh, analyzing, and it's giving you a count time for the amount of time it takes. It takes approximately 55 seconds for each uh, scanned item to be analyzed to each of the 18 databases. And as soon as it finishes with the first one, it will then automatically go to the next one in the list that's been checked. When that is all completed, you would then go back to your, your uh, comprehensive page and do your frequency optimization, which we will do in just, in just a moment here. So as you can see, we're almost finished with arteries of the head, and now it's gone to chromosome 4. And it will do the same thing with all four items. The other thing that this uh, process does is it generates your reports. Uh, if you do not do this stage, this section, in other words, you did your scan in comprehensive, and then you immediately went into frequency optimization, you would not get the detailed reports that the database uh, compiles. So especially on an initial scan, this is really important to do. Um, on secondary you know, scans, you know, a second or third scan of the same, same item, that report's really not going to change, so you could just do the scan and go straight to uh, frequency optimization. But on the first time through, this should be done. And then after four or five scans um, of, re of repeat scans, frequency optimiz uh, optimization scans, it would be good to do another complete database uh, and analysis and see how much of that has changed. So, <clears throat> as you can see now, all this data that comes up as it goes through this, you don't have to worry about trying to read this. It goes really quite fast. All of that data 
is being uh, formulated into your reports that which will be available to you as soon as this is finished now if uh, you were doing a full scan which would be 30 items you're looking at approximately 29 minutes to do um, the database analysis on 29 items that were scanned the scanning itself would have taken approximately 22 minutes and the frequency optimization would take about 12 minutes so there's a lot of time but even with um, the amount of time to do a full scan you can do a, a first time scan including inner voice vitals comprehensive with database and frequency optimization in under an hour and so it's a really great way to get a good uh, overall picture of where the client is and as you can see it's all very organized for you to see what's happening you can see at any point where the process is and so now it's just about to to move into toxicity and then to viruses and then this these four items will be finished now it's finished it's gone back to the top we want to go back and we want to do an optimization now before we do that your box is empty. If you click up here where it says scan list, it will bring those four items back. You see that? It brings them right back to here. And then you would click frequency optimization. Uh, as you can see right here, the, the uh, previous, before optimization, the numbers have been moved out, and the optimized numbers are now in the box to the right. You can see those right, right there. So the right, the top uh, artery, <clears throat> went from a 3 to a 4, so it improved one, one full point. Some of them, there was no change. And every once in a while, you'll see a number where the number got worse. And that is generally indicative of a Hertz timer reaction where there's a healing crisis going on. Now, if you look down at the bottom of the page, right down here to the right, percent change, 36%. So this indicates that there was a 36% overall improvement on the arteries of the head. Uh, occasionally, you will see a number that's in the negative. Uh, and if you'll notice, the arteries of the head went from a red to a blue, so there was an improvement. When you look at chromosome 4 here, uh, this shows there was a 23% change. And in the right ear, there was a negative 17% change. Now, when you see a number that's in the negative, that means that this, and especially on, an, on a situation like this where it's a pretty big number, 17, Anything over 10% plus or minus is substantial. 17% minus means the frequencies are only aggravating this situation. So we wouldn't want to do frequency on this again for a little while until we could get to whatever was causing the issues to begin with. So here's how you can see your, your change. And these reports, if we were to click email report right now, all four of these reports would be emailed to the client automatically. All right. so. We've done the scan, we've done the optimization, we've done the, the database analysis. The reports are ready. We can go through these uh, with the client or we can go right back to database and click on this very top button on the right, reports. When you click on reports, here's 
you have three different reports. Let's start with uh, the category. So here's all the allergens uh, that were found in these four items and what they're affecting. It tells you now red, blue, and green, again, uh, from the worst to the least. It'll also indicate um, how long that, that's been uh, affecting your uh, the, the, the items that's been scanned. So your allergens, sensitivities, bacteria, brain and spine. And so all of this information is here and can be printed. The next one, instead of in databases, we have a summary. And it just gives you the numbers. It doesn't give you all the, the uh, detail information except for emotional conflict. Emotional conflict is one, one of the really important uh, areas that you want to pay attention to. Uh, so here there's quite a bit of, of emotional conflict going on here, uh, more so than anything else. And then you have the comprehensive uh, report, and this takes each item that we scan and gives you all of the things that were affecting it, chromosome 4, uh, right ear, and so on. So here's your report. Uh, when you close out of the report, it'll ask you if you want to close all those tabs, and the answer is yes, close all tabs, it takes you back to this page. Now, if you wanted to edit those pages, those reports, you can click on Edit Reports, and then you can go, okay, I want to see the summary, so there's the summary, or maybe I want to see instead of the summary categories or the comprehensive. And I can, whatever I want to send to the client, so let's say I want to take this, uh, I only want to go to this section here. I can click uh, Control C and move it over into File 2. And this is the one I'm going to send to the client. Maybe I don't want all of this information to go over. So every, whatever I want to go over, I would then just copy and paste over to File 2. And then when I've got File 2 already, I would save that file open that file, we would name that file, and that's the file that we would then send out to uh, to the client. Uh, and then we can go back and that gives you an overview of how to do a comprehensive start to finish. Uh, I hope this has been helpful for you. There will be more videos into more detail on each one of those areas and thank you for watching. Hi, this is Lauren Swenson with AOScan and welcome to another video in our instructional video series. In this video we're going to talk about how to do a uh, inner voice scan. So let's get started. From your desktop, double click on your icon, brings you to your uh, main page. First thing we need to do is we need to select our client. So left click on the S uh, Select Client button. This brings up your client data page. Now, if this is a first time client, then all of this information needs to be filled out exactly the way it shows you here. And then we have a video that explains this. So if this is your first time, you need to watch that video that explains how to set up this data and why it's so important. Now, if it's a return client or they've already been set up, you have two ways to access their account. One, you can come to the bottom uh, left box where it says Search Stream. The other way to do that is when you hit Select Client, type in the first four letters of their last name, making sure you capitalize uh, the first letter and click on select client and it will bring up that client and if that's the client that you need once you've got it click save and go back make sure that as a technician that your name is selected and it's highlighted there go back so now that we're set up uh, left click on the programs button left click on inner voice and that brings up the inner voice screen now if you'll notice up in the top right corner, at the top is the name of the client, and directly below that is the name of the technician. You might want to always check that when you start so that you've got the right client loaded and the right technician doing the, the scan. 
Okay. Now, inner voice only takes 20 seconds. It's very simple. They just speak. It stops automatically. It creates the report, generates the tones. Uh, the most important part of this is that your prep, uh, preparation uh, for, with the client before they start to speak is, is key. Now, you can do a uh, couple different ways. You can actually type up a script that they read, uh, but best is if they can speak from their heart. So especially in the first time, you want to sit down with them, make sure that they're relaxed, they're breathing normal, maybe have a glass of water, a cup of tea, they're feeling comfortable, and you've got some dialogue going on between uh, you and the, and the client. Then explain to them that... Uh, all you need them to do is to speak from the heart. It doesn't matter what they say. There's no right or wrong. There's nothing silly or foolish. Just just speak from your heart. Talk about themselves, their spouse, their children. Uh, you'll be surprised how fast 20 seconds goes. But the key is that it's natural. It's from their heart. They're not uh, trying to sound professional. They just They just need to speak freely. So give them a minute, maybe two, to collect their thoughts and generally ask them to think about that they don't need to vocalize any of this. Just think about the things that are maybe troubling them, the things that are making them happy, things that cause them stress or worry. To think about those so that they're fresh in their mind. When they start to speak, those emotions will come through their voice. And that's what we're trying to pick up. So once everybody's ready, they've indicated that they're ready, hand them the microphone, make sure that they speak clearly uh, into the voice. They don't need to whisper. We want them to speak clearly, but not in a yell, just a normal voice. When they're ready, click start, and then they can speak. And so this is Lauren Swenson. I work at AOScan, and right now we're going through a demonstration on capturing the voice for inner voice. This helps them to understand the impact that emotions have physically in their body and so it's important that they do this and as you can see at 20 seconds the program stopped it's recorded all the different frequencies actually thousands of frequencies that are in the voice I can look at it in this chart here that shows the different notes and the amplitudes I can click uh, and see another chart that uh, shows the uh, the frequency bands and where in the voice pattern it is most dominant and then we can see this type of data that just shows you the number, the magnitude of the frequencies that we're getting. So it's quite a bit. But the most important, the easiest one to understand is the notes. And what we're looking for is the top three that are highest, that have the most amplitude, uh, because those are ones that we're generally overcompensating, our voice overcompensates for. And then we're looking for the one that is the lowest, and in this case, it looks like it's F, the note F. And the reason that that's important is that's usually the one that we're suppressing. So once we have that, you can then click on um, Accept if you're happy with that. Now, if they're not happy, oh, I want to do that again, or you, you don't feel like you got enough uh, volume, you just have them start over and just click Start and do it again. But once you've got the final voice, you click the accept so left click accept and that brings up their report so the top three was the note a the note e the note f and then g so these are the the four uh, notes that we came up with an explanation of how what these when there's a an imbalance in those notes what they actually mean and this is really good information for them to read it will also generate the different tones for each one of these that they uh, are encouraged to listen to and each one is five minutes long and so there's a 20 minute homework so to speak that they would listen to um, and when you click on the email reports it will send this printed report and it looks like this so in one of the other videos we talked about the importance of having your company logo uh, entered if it is entered it will put it at the top of the report there the report is easy for them to read and then also attached to that report will be the four five-minute mp3 uh, 
programs that they, they're encouraged to listen to. So that is the inner voice. And even though it's only 20 seconds of recorded, you're going to need to allot probably 5 to 10 minutes to complete this uh, this particular scan. When you're all finished, click on the close button and you're done. Thank you for watching. Hi, this is Lauren Swenson with AO Scan. Welcome to another video in the in our instructional video series. On this video, we're going to introduce you to the Cephi programs. So let's get started. Locate your icon on your desktop. Double click, brings you to your main page. Again, we want to go through and select your client. You can do that simply by typing in the first four letters of the last name, capitalizing the first one, and then clicking on Select Client, and then hit Save. And obviously, if it's your first patient, you need to fill out the entire form. That's covered in another video. Okay, so we're going to go, oh, and also make sure that you've got the proper technician selected. Okay, left-click on Programs, and CEFI stands for Subtle Energy Frequency Imprinter. So this is the program that you're going to use when you want to imprint remedies, affirmations, um, different little programs that you can imprint and either broadcast or actually imprint into a device to, for a client. Okay, so let's start up here with the race. If you're going to imprint uh, an item, whether it's a ring, an energy disc, an energy bracelet, um, whatever it is that you're going to imprint, even a bottle of water, the first thing you want to do is clear it from any energies that are in that item at the time. So you would put your item uh, in your Cephi, if you have a Cephi unit, or you can set it on your cradle, your software cradle. And uh, you would put it on and you would click again. And the same, uh, now that you're, you're, you've cleared it, now you can go in and you can either use it for your frequency optimization during your scan. So as you're doing the optimizations, all those frequencies are being simultaneously imprinted into whatever it is you have in the Cephi or on the cradle. And, um, or you can use them as separate standalone uh, functions. Okay, so once it's cleared, the item is cleared, let's say that we want to do an affirmation. You click on affirmation, and we have these already pre-built. And these these categories that you see will be expanded as future updates come out. But each one of these is a uh, frequency program for these different uh, subjects. You click on one and click imprint whatever the item is. So those are affirmations. Uh, the other ones that are, well, and then brain tones. This is one that is really helpful if you know the frequency, like in inner voice, it shows you the frequencies that are out of range. And if you want to expand on that, you can scroll this bar across until you find the frequency that you want to uh, play for your client or imprint into the client. Um, and you have different uh, ways that you can modify that with either wavy or pulses. Uh, or uh, modulations to help influence that to be more readily accepted in, in the brain. So re brain tones, you find where your frequency is. Once you've got it the way you want, you click play, and you can let it go for as, as long as you need. The other nice feature about this is in inner voice, it will tell you the frequencies that are out of range. And it will suggest the frequencies that they need to be played back into their, uh, into their head. It will also show you the color. Now, let's say that D sharp was the frequency that needed to be played back to the individual. Yellow would be, if they had colored glasses, yellow would be the lens that they would want to look through. Uh, or wear a yellow shirt, or yellow would be a beneficial color because it's um, the color of that frequency. So Brain Tones is a, is a wonderful a uh, little program and easy to operate. Once you've got it, you hit play, it runs the program. When you're finished, click the little X at the top. 
Okay. Um, single broadcast. Now, this is where this program uh, is a program where you can broadcast. So imagine this being like a radio station, and you're going to send a signal to a, uh, a receiver, and the receiver being the individual. And so when you click in this box here that says subject, it would take you to a file that has client pictures in it. So you must first, you need to take a picture of your client, and that would put their picture here. And then you would click in this box down here, that would, which would take them to uh, their picture folders where the fractals would be, and they would grab a fractal and put it in there. And they will have videos on each one of these programs uh, that go into more detail. This is just an overview of what Cephe allows you. And then you can type in the affirmation that you need. Click the green button, and then this little button up here that looks like a musical notes, you'd click that, that starts the program. It's also the same button that stops the program. And so that's the single broadcast. Now you also have a multiple broadcast where you could broadcast uh, frequencies to four different people simultaneously. So that's what the, the, the broadcast uh, CEPHI programs are. Then you have your chakras. So in the vital scan, you see where uh, one of the reports is the chakras. And if you see some of the chakras that are out of range, either too much yin or too much yang, you can actually come in and actually play the appropriate frequency to help bring that chakra back in balance. Or one that we like to use a lot is just the sweep, and it just goes all the way uh, from the root to the crown, uh, and it takes about two minutes to do that. And it just you can imprint that into something they wear, or you can put headphones on, and it's something that they listen to. All right, drugs. <clears throat> now this is another one. We have in this um, uh, directory here we have over eighteen hundred uh, pharmaceutical drugs and their appropriate frequencies so that you can actually imprint a frequency of, uh, of a drug into like a bracelet or into a bottle of water or sugar pills or whatever it is that you would, would be appropriate for your client and they would get the frequency benefit of the drug without the toxic effect of the chemical drug. And so you would just find the drug, highlight it, and again, this little note up here, that's your start and your stop. And general rule of thumb is for imprinting uh, one to two minutes. Uh, when really there's, no, there's not a consensus of whether it should be one minute or two minutes in the industry, so it's just whatever you feel is appropriate, but at least one minute and anything over two minutes is pretty much generally uh, accepted it's too much. Okay, so one to two minutes. Uh, flowers, these are the, the Bach flowers. Um, so you've got all the frequencies for the Bach flower remedies that can be imprinted into either a bracelet or a bottle of tincture or, or a ring, whatever it is that you need to do. Highlight the one, click imprint. Again, one to two minutes and you've made that remedy. Okay, Healing Vibes is a, is a great little program. Uh, if you've got somebody that has an issue, say somebody's dealing with uh, uh, allergies, you would click allergies. It loads the frequencies. And these are frequencies that were determined by Dr. Royal Rife back in the uh, 20s and 30s. He's the one that came up with these protocols. Loads them in there, and then you would, again, click the little note button for one to two minutes, and then turn it off. So it's a great little program. It's got a... Um, about 800 different programs already built in for you. Uh, it's very similar to the Rad Tones, same uh, concept, uh, but a little bit different way of delivering the frequencies, uh, a little bit more of a complex matrix of frequencies. And again, you can find the, the element. This also has a lot of your... Um, homeopathic remedies for example arnica montana you can start to type in and it will find arnica montana you could click on arnica montana and let's say you had a, a, a tube of cream you could put uh, the tube of cream uh, in the cephi itself 
click Arnica Montana, uh, click the, uh, the little note button for two minutes, and you've essentially made a homeopathic Arnica Montana. So, again, a great little program. Health is another affirmation program. So you have these health programs, someone that has insomnia. You could take this in the, this frequency, put it into a gummy bear or a stick of chewing gum, into a tincture, sugar pellets, whatever you felt would be appropriate, and imprint the frequencies for insomnia and give that to your client. Uh, again, imprint one to two minutes. Uh, homeopathic. Again, here's just uh, about uh, 36 homeopathic remedies, probably the most common. You have this option or you have the rad tones where you could select either one. They, they work uh, similar. Find your, the one that you want, imprint it for one to two minutes, then you're done. Okay, so uh, very quick overview of the CEFI programs. Again, CEFI uh, is an acronym for... Uh, subtle energy frequency imprints and so these are the programs that you have available to you at this point and these will be expanded as time goes by with uh, with more uh, options and more things to do now this top one up here wave generator is really designed for uh, the acoustic light wave that is manufactured that we manufacture uh, which is uh, a rife device, a broadcast rife tube. However, the same frequency programs can be imprinted, so that's why it's also in the Cephi category. And if you already have, uh, you've also purchased the acoustic light wave, well then here's your software built in for you, and the AO scanner will talk directly to this. But let's say you go in and you go to click on A, here's all the issues, uh, acute pain, you click on acute pain, loads the frequencies, and you would hit start. Simple, easy. Alphabetical order of all the different elements that we have frequencies for. Find the one that you want and hit start. Nothing to, you don't have to worry about changing frequencies or setting any, any uh, parameters up. It does it automatically. So that is the wave generator, again, specifically designed for the acoustic light wave but can also be imprinted. If you are going to imprint one of these, you can see that there's several different frequencies. They're going to run for 180 seconds each one, so you'd have to let it run through the entire cycle once to get the full benefit of the imprint. So this is where it's different. If you're imprinting some of the others, you're only looking at one to two minutes. This here is going to take uh, several minutes, you know, close to an hour. So again, specifically designed for acoustic light wave but can also be used as an imprint all right copy last part here let's say that somebody has uh, a supplement or medicine that they're taking and they're having a terrible time with the toxicity if you have the cephi unit and it will only work on the cephi unit you can take a sample of whatever uh, the supplement is that they want to duplicate you put that on one plate and there's another video that explains how to do this. And then your uh, imprint device, whether it's sugar pills, bracelet, uh, an energy disc, whatever, on the other side. And you would simply hit copy, and it would take the frequency signature of whatever's on the copy plate and put it into the whatever's sitting on the imprint plate. So here's your Cephi. It's in a whole program in and all, all by itself. And I hope this was helpful for you. And thank you for watching. Hi, this is Lauren Swenson with AO Scan, and welcome to another video in our instructional video series. In this video, we're going to talk about the function that's built into the comprehensive uh, program called Analyze. So let's double click on our icon, and we've got our client uh, loaded in. And we have our technician set. 
I'm going to go right into the program of comprehensive. You see the client on the bottom and the, the technician. And we're going to scan the heart. So I click the heart and we're going to hit scan. Now as it goes through, it's going to do a uh, normal scan on the heart. What we want to do is be able to find the appropriate supplement to help the heart. So here we are. Here's the the information on the heart. We can see that we've got some issues here. Uh, we're going to go to analyze. And so it's saying right up here, comprehensive file heart. We're going to check it for an appropriate supplement. Now we have supplements that are preloaded and you can click on those and there's all the different supplements in that category. Um, oils, whatever the supplements are. But let's say that the category is not here because we have supplements that are not loaded into categories. And let's just say we want to check and see is vitamin C uh, going to help. So we type in vitamin C and if it's in the database then it will scan it. Now what it will do as soon as we hit analyze it'll take the frequency for vitamin C and compare it to the condition of the heart for this client and it will tell us okay it'll benefit 0 to 100 um, percent or and the stress it will cause on the body 0 to 100 percent and then it will give us a conclusion if the supplement is good for this condition so let's hit an analyst analyze and there's scanning vitamin C scanning the body for stress and it's saying okay 91 percent helpful there's a 26 percent uh, stress on the body but it's a five and five is ideal so anything really uh, three to seven uh, is is worth the it's worth taking but really what you really want is a four five or a six and so right there we know in just a few seconds if this supplement is going to help the condition of the heart for this client it's a great way I mean I know a lot of people use muscle testing uh, and other methods to do it and maybe be a little faster. The reason that we put this in is for those who are not comfortable with doing a muscle test or their their knowledge of supplements and the client maybe isn't as good as, you know, seasoned practitioners. And it takes the human element out of it, uh, the biases. And so this is why this particular uh, module is added to your thing. And you can go through every single thing that you've done and through the different categories and find the supplements uh, that are going to be the best uh, for your the condition that we're, we're analyzing. Again, so this is for this individual for the condition listed here for today. And that's what it has to be cut you have to look at now it might come up where it comes up well let's uh let's reset that and let's put in uh, uh, vitamin d and analyze now this comes up it's only 15 percent gonna be helpful for the heart 22% stress on the body and for the heart it's a it's a two so you would not want to use uh, or suggest that they use a vitamin D so it shows you both and it's totally unbiased um, so the beauty of this is is the client can see that you have no uh, influence on how this determines whether a supplement is good or bad. Again, for some of those, for those of you who are really proficient in muscle testing, this may not be what you want to use. But for those of you who are not, and are still a little uncertain of how to to suggest supplements, here's a nice uh, little module to help you do that. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.